like to call the uh, Lancaster Central School District Board of Education meeting to order. In the unlikely event of an emergency, if we have to evacuate the room, please note the locations of the exits. At this time, I ask you to silence your cell phones and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Remain standing for a moment of silent reflection. Moving on to 4.0 presentations. 4.1, Board of Education Appreciation. Good evening. In honor of Board Education Appreciation Week, on behalf of the administration, faculty, and staff, we would like to extend our gratitude to all of you for your commitment to Lancaster. We know your position comes with significant responsibility, uh, time away from your loved ones, and a focus on fulfilling the mission of Lancaster Schools. We thank you for your part in ensuring the district provides the best educational and extracurricular opportunities for students in this district. We thank you for dedicating your time to support our great employees. And we thank you, ultimately, and most importantly, for your commitment to students. Without you all, we would not be here. You are all very special people. I ask at this time that you join us in the front row, if you wouldn't mind, for a video presentation in your honor. Thank you again for all your hard work.
thank you, Mr. Candela. And um, you know, I, I think as a board, we, we, we really thank the, the teachers and the administrators because it, you all are really what make uh, this job uh, fun to do. And I love that there were so many students in those videos because really, that's what it's all about. It, it's about all those things going on. And, uh, and I really appreciate that. And I, I did note uh, championing uh, uh, athletics. I, I did want to mention that the girls soccer team did win the sectional championship uh, this evening. <laughs> and uh, I believe it is the first time ever that they've won that sectional championship. So congratulations to those, uh, those girls and uh, that's a, a huge accomplishment that no team, I think, deserved it more than they did. All right, so now we've got 4.2 uh, teacher, uh, sorry, tenure certif certif uh, certificate presentation. Mr. Armstrong? In her four years at Sholey Elementary, Marissa Marmion has shown great and real strength in her willingness to be flexible. She began as a kindergarten teacher, and then she moved to second grade. Her second year at second grade, she taught fully remote. No matter what her placement, Mrs. Marmion approached it, her colleagues and her students, with a fully positive approach. Mrs. Marmion also excels in establishing a positive culture of learning. At both grade levels, Mrs. Marmion has demonstrated that she does an exemplary job of creating a classroom where students feel comfortable by actively participating, asking questions, and taking initiative. Instructionally, Mrs. Marmion should be praised for how well she communicates the expectations for learning with both of her kindergarten and her second grade students. She consistently makes the purpose for her lessons clear and makes connections between the learning and her students' interests. Finally, Mrs. Marmion is a wonderful building leader. She has stepped up to be the second grade ELA representative for the first, for, during her first year in second grade and did a wonderful job. She is also on the Building, build, building Bully Proof Partnership Team and the District Health Committee, Mental Health Committee. Congratulations on becoming a tenured member of our Lancaster family. Mrs. Truzy has been an asset to the William Street team. She has worked on both consultant and general education teams and is well respected by her peers. Mrs. Truzy's calm and reflective demeanor, demeanor serve her students and colleagues in a positive manner. She views challenges and changes as an opportunity to grow personally and professionally. She is an active member of the William Street Science Committee where she is focused on instruction which is aligned to meet the next generation standards. She provides updates to her colleagues and organizes information and resources for instruction in the shared drive. Especially in a large school like William Street, these updates and resource sharing are important to the education that we provide to our students. Additionally, Mrs. Truzy is well versed in Kagan strategies and structures in her classroom and incorporates these strategies to maximize student engagement and learning. She differentiates her lessons to meet the needs of all of her students. She attends professional development opportunities and continually seeks ways to use technology to enhance her instruction. Mrs. Truzy is reflective and seeks constructive feedback from colleagues and administration. Mrs. Truzy also understands the importance of the homeschool connection. She keeps open lines of communication with parents and helps them to understand their children's strengths and weaknesses. And finally, she is truly a member of the Lancaster community. Mrs. Truzy is often seen attending Lancaster functions with her family. 
We're excited about Mrs. Trusey's continued work with our students here in Lancaster. And finally, we have Mrs. Crane. Mrs. Crane is a teacher at Court Street Elementary. And during her time, since the time she was hired at Court Street, she's been a dedicated member of the team. She is an advocate for all students. Her students feel welcome when they are brought into her classroom. She exemplifies the important characteristics that we want our Lancaster students to emulate. She's willing to take on challenges and she is known as a problem solver. She engages, she's engaging and projects her care and compassion for students and for her colleagues. As an instructionalist, her lessons are engaging and student-centered. She uses data to differentiate her instruction to meet the needs of her children. Mrs. Crane has worked with both general education and special education students in her time here in Lancaster. She strives to create lessons that meet the needs of all of her learners and collaborates with teachers from various departments to modify her lessons and the curriculum. Mrs. Crane extends her influence beyond her classroom. She's an important member of the literacy team, the character education team, and the emergency response team. Her diverse committee membership shows her dedication to the whole child, not just in academics. We're thrilled to congratulate Mrs. Crane on her tenure and look forward to her being a part of our team for years to come. Folks, we're good. This is Danielle Wink, special education teacher at Wayne Street School. Uh, it is just an honor and with certainly with great pleasure that I speak to you this evening about Danielle. Um, it's easy and enjoyable to do so because she's just a phenomenal teacher. Um, in the classroom, where it all gets done, really, folks. Uh, She's phenomenal, as I said. She's superb. For example, when you go into her classroom, it's just, it's seamless in the sense of seamless in terms of her organization, preparation, her, her transitions and lessons are smooth. Um, her kids are always engaged when you go into the classroom. They're engaged, they're learning, and moreover, she's always giving them feedback, specific feedback with specially designed instruction so that they can learn from that feedback and move on to learn, especially in reading. But also, um, the opportunity in the math class, the co-teach math class, from all accounts is exceptional too, because she has a great working relationship with her co-teacher, her general education teacher. Um, it's very clear when you talk to her and you see her teach and you see her working at William Street School that she loves her students and she loves teaching. Moreover, um, as a person as, and as a colleague, the district hit the jackpot four years ago. Uh, Danielle is calm. She's extraordinarily insightful. And she's a very, very supportive to her students and her teammates. I know her team over there. I worked with some of those teachers a few years ago. They love her. Um, she, she's right in there with them all the time, working in the best interest of the kids. Um, that she's in charge of. So, and she is just a very, very extraordinarily warm and accepting, there's just an extraordinarily warm and accepting way about her when you work with her. So Danielle, you are most deserving of tenure, of the tenure recognition, and thank you for working so hard to help our students in
Thank you, Dr. Marchioli. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Moving on to uh, 5.0 correspondence, we do have uh, 19 emails on record. And 6.0, approval of minutes. And I have a motion to approve 6.1, the regular session from October 4th, 2021. Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 7.0, items from staff organizations. Anyone from the Lancaster Administrative and Supervisory Association? Thank you, Mrs. Bull. Anyone from the Lancaster Central Teachers Association? Good evening. Good evening. I uh, just wanted to take, also take a moment on behalf of the Lancaster Central Teachers Association to congratulate our newly tenured teachers, as well as to extend a uh, note of appreciation to the Board of Education for the work that you do. Uh, I think I know I've mentioned this in the past. I, I know what it's like to hold elected office. Um, you know, the, the phone calls, the emails, sometimes you feel like people don't like you. Um, you know, all of that that comes along with holding elected office. And in, uh, especially in your position where it is truly a volunteer position, it's a non-compensated position, you do put in a lot of time and effort. And even though we don't always agree, we do appreciate the time you do put into it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abraham. Anyone from the Lancaster Association of Service Personnel? Anyone from the Lancaster Association of Substitute Teachers? Moving on to 8.0, board reports. Uh, anyone from the board uh, that has anything to report? And 9.0, Superintendent's Administrative Report, Dr. Valak. Yeah, I have a couple of things, Mr. Sage. Um, you know, as I've said, uh, since day one of this 2021-22 school year, uh, the adults and students of this school district will safely implement all COVID protocols for the safety of everyone involved. But at the same time, we will work hard to try to provide our young people with a sense of normalcy uh, to the very best of our ability. And true to that goal, we've recently completed normal traditions, which are typical to a traditional and normal homecoming week replete with spirit events, spirit assemblies, dances, albeit under tents, but dances, motorcades, powder puff footballs, men's football games, daily spirit dress up days, et cetera, et cetera. In essence, we had, and most importantly, our students had a lot of fun. I'd like to thank all the administrators and all the teachers and all the support staff and the parent volunteers and the members of the community like our firemen and women and the Lancaster Police Department also, also and additionally, all the student leaders who planned and organized and battled to ensure that these events would happen and that they would happen safely. Uh, you really made a difference. It was a memorable homecoming week because of all your hard work and dedication, and I'm thankful and very proud of all of you. Connected to this, um, and even more recently, at all of our buildings, there was a continued uh, return to normalcy with a return to Halloween. And the first time in over 30 years, all seven of our buildings participated in faculty, staff, and students showing their creativity with costumes and Halloween fun. So many of these posts and pictures and uh, wonderful fun events and costumes have been shared on, on social media. And our K-3 kids love uh, Halloween and there's nothing better than uh, a school parade. And some of those pictures there are there as well. If you haven't seen them, take a moment uh, to look at some of the spooky and creative and adorable costumes from uh, some of our smallest students. And finally, in the spirit of Board of Education appreciation, I just wanted to thank each and every one of the Board of Education members for your service to the school district and our children. Words cannot express my eternal gratitude 
to you to put in your name on the ballot, to volunteer unpaid, to take on challenges of our time, and to battle in the ways that you do for our Lancaster kids, our district, and our community. I'm forever indebted and grateful, so thank you very much. And finally, uh, uh, shout out to Kim Grimal, who put together that uh, uh, video and presentation. Um, um, she has made an absolutely wonderful addition to the administrative team and to the school district in a very short amount of time. That's just one great example of it. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for that time and effort putting that together. Thank you, Dr. Valley. Moving on to 10.0, old business. Does anyone have any old business to discuss? 11.0, new business. 11.1, personnel items. 11.1.1, can I have a motion on the personnel changes? Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 11.2, education items. 11.2.1, can I have a motion on the committee on special education? Aye. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 11.2.2, can I have a motion on the committee on preschool special education? Aye. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. On to 12.0, business and financial items. 12.1, can I have a motion on the financial items? Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.2 is a policy second reading of 7440 student voter registration and pre-registration. That's for information only. Uh, we'll have a third reading at our next meeting, at which time we'll vote. 12.3, can I have a motion on the class? Scholastic Achievement Recognition Dinner? Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.4, can I have a motion on the contract for the Clarence Central School District? Mm -hmm. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. Can I have a motion on the contract with Alden Central School District? So Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.6, the contract with Erie One Boses, Title 2A. Can I have a motion? Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.7, can I have a motion on the contract with Beth Farrar? No. Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.8, can I have a motion on the amended uh, New York State DOT land acquisition? Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.9, can I have a motion uh, on the contract with Renaissance Addiction Services, Inc.? Hello. Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.10, can I have a motion on the contract with Jonathan Rizzo? Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.11, can I have a motion on the extra classroom club creation of eighth grade class board? Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.12, .12, can I have a motion to declare surplus equipment? Any 
Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.13, can I have a motion to declare surplus books? Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.14, can I have a motion on the construction change orders? Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.15, can I have a motion on the proposal with Young and Wright Architectural? Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.16, can I have a motion on the seeker for the district office maintenance building annex? So second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.17, can I have a motion on the substitute rates? So second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.18, can I have a motion on the standard work hours? Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 12.19, can I have a motion on the food service monthly reports? So second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. 13.0 is our public hearing. Any person who notified the district per policy 1514 may speak at this time. Speakers must be first recognized and then identify themselves by stating their name and address. Uh, the time limit to speak is five minutes per person. And uh, welcome to all who have come to observe this meeting. This time is set aside for the public hearing, a time when we invite members of the community to share ideas and concerns with us. We welcome this opportunity to hear from you. Again, each person is given five minutes in which to address the board. And keep in mind this meeting is held in public rather than a public meeting, which means we will not be engaging in dialogue with members of the community this evening, but rest assured we are listening carefully and we take seriously what you have to say. I would like, you, uh, like to ask you to demonstrate respect for us and one another by speaking to the issues, giving us ideas, and sharing opinions, but not engaging in, in any personal attacks. This policy will be strictly enforced, and anyone violating the policy will be barred from addressing the board in the future. Thank you for your cooperation. All right, we have two speakers tonight. First, uh, we have Tara Romig of 76 Livingston Street. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for hearing me out. Um, I'm nervous. I've never done this before, but um, I feel that it's, it's right to do so. Um, okay, I first want to just speak on masks and the ineffectiveness and the fact that they do increase mental illness for children. Um, that's important. So basically, masks are ineffective. Here we are. We're all in this room. Every single one of us are wearing masks. But whenever you go to the grocery store, how many people are wearing masks? I haven't worn a mask since, oh gosh, long time since last year. I only wear them to the doctor's office and I wear them to come to school. That's it. Anyhow, so COVID is an airborne illness. So how effective is a mask that is actually porous? These are very porous, have holes in them. Um, the COVID virus is 0.12 micrometers in size. The National Library of Medicine has a peer review article out titled Optical Microscopic Study of Surface Morphology and Filtering Efe Efficacy of Face Masks, showing the results that the pore size of masks range from 80 to 500 micrometers, which is much bigger than the COVID virus, which is 1.12 micrometers. So how effective are they really? Um, this is also shown in a three minute animated stuff video on YouTube called Virus Versus Mask. It's a great three minute video. I highly encourage you to go check it out. Um, 
A great analogy basically is like throwing a handful of sand through a chain link fence with these masks. It's not gonna block too much. So just letting you know. And if there's any curiosity of like, oh well, you know, certainly these masks protect you. They certainly protect you. How many kids have been out of school since September? I know my kids, all four of them, have been out of school for 13 days out of 30 some odd instructional days. Um, and they all wear masks all the time. Um, anyhow, so let's see. The box of face masks, I have a box of face masks over there. It says right there in the box, they're not intended to provide protection against pathological, biological, airborne particles. COVID's airborne. So I guess it's not gonna protect you there. Um, and then there's, of course, various telegram videos that show in under 30 seconds, visually, how air seeps through the mask on the sides, on the top. Yeah, I guess you can still get sick. Anyhow, um, and mask also can contribute to increased mental illness. If somebody suffers from anxiety, this feels very suffocating on them. It makes it hard to breathe. It's hard to breathe and they can, you know, have attacks. So, and then of course there's depression, increased suicide, etc. Um, by the way, COVID deaths in children, 0 to 18, from the CDC website is 657 kids that have died. Um, that's from January 20th of 2020 to 1023 of 2021. 657 kids have died. Suicide in ages 10 to 19 for one year was 62,118 in one year alone. That's concerning. So if, this, if these could cause mental illness, along with all of this going on right now, we should probably look into that. Um, and then I just want to end on this. Okay, I posted this. I'll tell you about it in just a minute. So just think about the boiling frog fable. The boiling frog is a fable describing a frog being slowly boiled alive. The premise is that a frog is suddenly put into boiling water, it will jump out. But if a frog is put into tepid water, which is then brought to a boil slowly, it will not perceive the danger and will be cooked to death. So let's think about what's happened in the last year and eight months roughly. Okay, um, two weeks to flatten the curve is how it started, right? Two weeks. Then, let's wear a mask on occasion. Well, then wear a mask when you go out. Well, then wear a mask all the time. Well, now there's a vaccine, but only get it if you wish. Only get it if you wish. How about we give you money and stuff to get it? What about a free beer, coffee? Maybe a hundred bucks, lottery ticket? Well, get it if you want to go to a concert, but then you don't have to wear a mask. Don't wear a mask at all. Well, if you're vaccinated and indoors, then wear a mask. You know what? It doesn't matter if you're vaccinated. Just wear the mask all the time. It makes me wonder how many of us are actually vaccinated. And yet here we are in masks. Pretty visual. Um, so it doesn't matter if you're vaccinated, just wear the mask all the time. We're never gonna, we are never gonna mandate the vaccine, but we encourage businesses to mandate it. Now it's time to mandate it for the military and federal employees. Let's add hospital workers and school workers to the list also. Kids now have the option to get it. Gotta wear those masks all the time to attend school, regardless of if you got vaccinated. Next in line is you will have to get vaccinated to attend school. California's already pushing this. Mark my words and watch it happen. I posted this on September the 9th. Please question yourself. Look at where we're at. How many vaccines is it gonna take? We're gonna mandate this for our kids? It's scary. I also invite you to look at free speech platforms such as BitChute, Rumble, and Telegram. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, they're all gonna censor the death out of you. But BitChute, Rumble, Telegram, I invite you to take five minutes of your time and just go on there and just check it out. That's all I have to say. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. Oh, by the way, I am all for Lancaster. I love Lancaster. I love it. I don't want to move. Thank if you, we have Mr. to mandate Norman. vaccines, I got to go. Thank you. And then we have uh, Dan Roman of Five Hidden Trail. Hello, my name is Dan Romig. I work at one of the largest manufacturing companies in Western New York, and we're fighting a mandate that was slowed down by the Biden executive order that he at one time said he couldn't do. Uh, we went, we set up a website, we hired a lawyer. Uh, the website is nomandateusa.com that we're raising money for a lawyer. 
I'm a father of two girls, and that's why I'm here. Because I'm against the mandate, because I think it's un-American, it's not patriotic, and it's not what we're founded on. But further than that, I'm also against the vaccine for a number of reasons. You might not believe what I'm saying, but I urge you to look into the information yourself, because that's how I was convinced. Do it for yourself, do it for your kids. The mandates are coming for kids. We never thought it was gonna be for us, but the mandate for kids are coming. First of all, uh, the vaccine is not even a vaccine. It's only called a vaccine because they actually changed the, the definition in Webster's Dictionary. The vaccine definition used to be the act of introducing a vaccine into the body to produce immunity to a specific disease. They now change the definition, the act of introducing a vaccine into the body to produce protection from a specific disease. So they say, well, we can get it because we can have some protection at least. Well, that's not true either. Kids zero to 17 are not really dying at alarming rates. And I agree that any death of a child is horrific and should be tried to be prevented. But once you start comparing it to other causes of death, you'll see what I mean. Per the CDC uh, website and guidelines updated on July 2021, this is per the CDC data, the IFR rate, which is infection fatality rate, which means the number of people that have to get infected before somebody dies is one in 200,000. That means one person would die in 200,000 cases. Again, one is too many. However, when you compare it to other data, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Uh, also from other data, January 2020 to August 5th, there were 349 deaths for kids from zero to 17 involving COVID. I put that in quotation marks because it actually specifically said involving COVID over a total of 51,892. That means one out of 150 children die of COVID. COVID is not the number one concern that we should be having. The 2019 causes of death for five to 14 year olds, and the reason why I'm bringing up the 2019 causes is because they don't have the data for 2020 or 2021 out. The CDC WizCore system for about 5,500 kids, 760 died from motor vehicle traffic accidents. 233 died from drowning. And I don't see us changing or closing pools, swimming pools, Erie Lake, Erie Canal, and stuff like that. Uh, malignant neoplasms, which are cancerous tumors, 775. Suicide, which goes to terrorist point regarding um, mental issues, 534. Congenital anomalies, 381. Homicide, 346. Heart disease, 178. The flu and pneumonia, 123. Also, you can also go on the VAERS data system, CDC Wonder, you can look it up in Yahoo and Google. Over the past 31 years, all vaccines combined killed an average of 149 people per year. That's a total of 4,600 people. All vaccines combined in 31 years. COVID, just in 2021 alone, killed 7,966 people. That's twice as many in one year compared to all the vaccines that's ever done. Stephen Kirst, the executive director of COVID-19 Early Treatment Fund, he gave a presentation in which for 20 to 30 year olds, he stated based on data um, that 6.1 people get killed for every one person that the vaccine saves. And you might say, well, what about the older generations and stuff like that, the people that are 60 and 70 years old? Well, his data shows that 2.3 people die for every one person that's saved. Thank you, appreciate your time. Thank you, Mr. Romney. Fourteen point zero is our adjournment, um, and just to note, our next meeting is on December six, two thousand twenty-one, seven p.m. right here in uh, the Lancaster High School Auditorium. Fourteen point zero. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Any comments or questions? All those in favor? Aye. Anyone against? Motion carries. Good night, everyone. Thank you for coming.